When you think about the United States of America, do you think about this? Or maybe this? Well, how about this? Before the 17th century, America was just tribes roaming through plains and constructing thoughts about life. However, in the 1800s, the United States of America had this desire to expand and grow to the West. Native Americans were only given a single option, to adapt to society. But in the contemporary age, how do they live among a globalized community? And how do they keep their culture alive while still using modern entertainment? In this show, we will learn about the Navajo tribe of the Four Corners, a tribe that won't be shaken. Window Rock. It's the capital of the Navajo Nation, the largest reservation on American soil. Here, you will find honor to the past, dedication to the present, and commitment to the future. The Navajo Nation Museum showcases aspects of Diné culture. Every week, Navajo flea markets congregate to celebrate Navajo community. Today, they hosted a 29-kilometer run in honor of the Navajo Cool Talkers. During the Second World War, these men developed an unbreakable code that helped save America using the Navajo language. That code was never deciphered throughout the war. These men learned English as students and deciphered messages from one military base to another. Ironically, the Navajo language was considered illegal at the same time it saved the country against the Japanese. The Navajo people nowadays have a deep sense of pride in these men, who introduced the full capabilities of a Navajo man to the world. However, the Navajo culture made its greatest leap to the minds of modern Americans when they were brought to the big screen. A few kilometers away from the east and west mountains lies the second most famous filming point. Here, you can find just exactly where Forrest Gump stopped his run in the beautiful countryside. I'm pretty tired. I think I'll go home now. This may be pretty familiar. Known as John Wayne Point, it is the image that one thinks of when they hear Wild West. John Wayne first set out to Monument Valley before it was known in popular culture, and it is said that he taught the Native Americans how to act like Indians because they had not lived in such a way as depicted in mass media in centuries. Since the arrival of John Wayne and the director John Ford, several more films have been filmed in the park. Right behind me is the Four Corners, um, where you can stand between Colorado, Utah, New Mexico, and Arizona. Although it is four different states, you're in one country and one nation, the Navajo Nation. Nowadays, you can see that it is just a popular tourist destination on the Navajo Reservation. This is Colorado, and this is New Mexico. However, the Navajo Nation only got three-fourths of the Four Corners. Colorado, this whole area, is not Navajo. When the four borders of Colorado, New Mexico, Utah, and Arizona were born, uh, the Navajo Nation's cultural significance was neglected in these areas. So even though this is Navajo land, this is not. The number four is a sacred one in Navajo culture. From the four clans that every Navajo identifies with, to the four elements of life, and to the four sacred mountains of the sacred Navajo land, this number is a prideful one to the Diné people. Here in Tuba City, we visit the Navajo Museum, which delightfully explains these aspects of Navajo culture.
In the Navajo teachings, a strange and spontaneous volcanic depression known as Ship Rock is one of the people's most sacred sites. Behind me is a mythical formation known as Ship Rock. Now, Ship Rock is the core of Navajo ideology. The first people, the first Navajo people, came to this rock and went to the top, coming down for only water and food. However, one day, lightning struck the rock, and the people were stranded, forced to starve. Now, it is forbidden for Navajo people to ever go onto the rock, and it is just appreciated from a distance, like now. The Navajo culture is one that learned to cooperate with nature. In the town of Church Rock, just a few miles from Gallup, New Mexico, off of the famous Route 66, the Navajo Nation had its worst disaster in the year 1979. A uranium spill caused over 93 million gallons of radioactive waste to flow into the nearby Puerco River, causing extreme damage to the local people. The disaster occurred only a few months after the more known Three Mile Island catastrophe, but was not recognized in mass media or protected under federal law or government. Today, the people of the surrounding areas face many health-related diseases due to the unsustained catastrophe that caused a quake between the Navajo people and nature. When it comes to beauty, the Navajo Nation is definitely a top contender of the most unique languages spoken in North America. The language has seemed to transform and derive from the land it was surrounded by and become the language spoken today. Explosive consonants derive from the higher elevations and the ease of pronunciation at that level and tones had a unique touch to the language, tying it back to its Asian ancestors. The language is beyond interesting, in that it is more related to Tibetan than it is to any remotely European language. One can describe the sunrise, or the ha'a'a, -ha, in a way that was meant to be said. or speak of the surrounding dunes as if they were described by a novelist. It's because of this that the Navajo people have such a pride in their land and culture, even through the physical hardships that they have been dragged through for centuries. Although they were taken from their sacred land to an alternative destination, they still believed in their calling. The Diné people are beyond formidable. In fact, they're a tribe that won't be shaken. <laughs>